Alexa into your repetitive use brain. So pushing the play button, the record button. Um, I think maybe there are a few issues just with respect to um, to conference stuff. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was. Um, oh, we do have Kevin on on the call. Cool. Um, I was just uh, sending an email, Kevin. I think we can probably go ahead and create the the web page for the conference and just leave things like the location TBD. Um, and I'm just going to send you basically the initial initial content to spin it up, and then the rest of us can can edit it as needed if that sounds okay to everybody. Works for me. That's Which awesome. conference is this for? Uh, for ChaosCon Europe in Brussels on February 1st. Right on. Did we find space yet or no? No, um, but Danny has some, some good options. So he's documenting it all into a Google Doc that he sent to the mailing list a few hours ago. Okay. Um, so you can see the options they have so far. And I think the, that he said that they were talking to a couple more uh, venues coming up uh, today or tomorrow. It's coming up fast. It is, I know. Crazy. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else on that one? Kevin, did you get that? I don't know if your your, your microphone's not working. <laughs> I'm guessing that's what those clicks are. That could be. Well, Kevin, I'll, I'll send you the email and you'll you'll have it. Okay, cool. Um, so I've been... Um, Anything else on that one? Events stuff while we're here at the spot? I think I think that's the only event we have coming up. You have one oh, in Japan. Who's, who's coming to Edinburgh? Right. That's right. I do have one in Japan. Uh, I am not coming to Edinburgh. I am not either. I will be there mm. at MozFest. Uh, okay. Yeah. Are you going, Don? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. I have a... I have a talk on my kernel research. It's the same talk I gave in uh, Vancouver. Okay. Don, would you like to be part of the tutorial on DNI? Uh, it's on the last day. It's the last session of the day. <laughs> that's more feeling, isn't it? <laughs> You're looking um, for participants, that's, aren't you? That's in, that's in Edinburgh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me let me look at the tour tutorial description and um, and the timing, and let you know. So we, we're still designing the tutorial. Okay. So when you come to the DNI meeting, we'll probably talk about it again. Okay. That's a tough time to have. Last day, last time. Yeah. It's the worst slot available. <laughs> <laughs> Or truth. it's a slot that they, they give people because they're trying to keep people at the conference because you're a rock star and you'll be there. Be. You're a positive thinker. That is very <laughs> I have done that. Spot. So as a conference yeah. organizer, I have frequently put people who then are very angry with me, but put them in the last slot of the day because well, they're really good at, speakers and people will stay to see them. It made the role. Yeah. That was, they did that with Linus Torvalds. Mm -hmm. He was the last yeah. day. Yeah. And you could put uh, they almost always put him on the last day um, mm -hmm. as a keynote at the Linux Foundation events because they, they know that everyone will stay for it. For that very reason. Exactly. All right. Um, and Sean, you're, John is going to Japan. Mm -hmm. He's for presenting his work. Uh, compliance Summit. Yep, as we start building out our connections with the uh, RISC folks. Mm -hmm. So Sean connected with the uh, Open Chain gang. Get it? Do they call themselves the Open Chain Gang? No, I just did that. That would be great. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and uh, so yeah, we're gonna be. Out, I'll be out there talking chaos. Yeah, and I think you're running a like a forty minute workshop, something along those lines. Uh, yeah, there's one forty five to fifty minute workshop at the main conference, but I okay. think you're talking about a larger, more open tutorial the day before. Okay. Um, that was mentioned vaguely. I've made my travel arrangements to account for it. Um, and the last message I got was more details forthcoming. So okay. we'll wait for them to forthcome since that's, that's December. <clears throat> Would it make sense, do you think, for the tutorial to have um, some working prototypes of 
yeah, I would think I would think any tutorials should include Grimoire Lab and Augur at a minimum. Okay. Um, and we have demoable versions of both. Well, so but I'm thinking even with respect to the risk component, you know. So like last week, right. we started talking about potential integration of some of the scanners that are in Phosology. Yeah. Um, and maybe I can work with Matt here to start getting that moving forward. So even if they're kind of rough prototypes as to what that yeah. look like. I actually saw, um, was it a pull request that was recently made? That, uh, yeah, there was a recent pull request made where somebody's written a shell script with all kinds of regular expressions in it that goes through looking for licensing information. I think you commented on it at one point. Okay. Uh, Jesus and I commented on it today. Okay. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> and I asked him to maybe put a little documentation within his, like a few comments in his code. So mm -hmm. we knew what was happening, but I think there are some, I mean, you and Matt Snell and I could talk, but I, I think there's ways to plug whatever work you're doing into whatever work he does into Augur directly. Well, a lot of this, I mean, all the heavy lifting on the scanners is done, you yeah. know, whether it's scan code or Nomos or Ninka, yeah, and like whatever with, the scanner might be. Yeah, like with Facade, I, um, you know, we're going to go, I've, the team had a few concerns about the native compiling things that are in it, uh -huh. just in terms of distributing the code. And I talked with Brian Warner at Samsung about it. He's a guy that wrote most of it. And there's like four years of debugging. Yeah. And, anomaly and weird weird shit in git repository stuff that's in there so we're just gonna boil that in as a component of auger and that's uh, what this will be too yeah right. and exactly the same thing you know and it's like his license doesn't conflict with mit and i just have to look at the license to make sure i don't <clears throat> they don't do anything that conflicts with how everybody's doing it well in the case of phosology i think it would be even more distant because i'm guessing it would be a a call at the command line. It would it'd kind of be an external call. <clears throat> so, or scan code. I don't know that you'd bake it fully into the Augur stuff. Yeah, I mean that's basically what we're doing with facade. Okay. We're not. We're, we're. But we're bringing it in like as a library so that you can see the front end in in Augur. It's okay. gathering all the data on the back end using uh, Brian's work. Okay. Right? It's we're working to present it in Augur so that because it gives people something they want to see and all the things we're doing. I talked with Brian for like an hour last week and all the things we're doing with highly visualized graphs, high, highly high visual, high graph, downloadable data. All those are all things he wants in okay. facade. It doesn't, it doesn't have the time to build. So and I've gotten similar feedback from um, Jonas, Jonas yeah. at VMware, um, you know, he wants to see the graphics around the Git repository stuff because we have it okay. for all the GH torrent info and we just, he wants us to call several people now, including Kate, want us to map it. So we get like three different people saying that they want the visualization for the Git repository stuff from Facade. Okay. <clears throat> so so that's, that kind of, that's on your to-do right now. Yeah, I'm trying to sort of front load it and be as responsive as I can to the people who are checking facade out. I'm checking Augur out. Okay. Or Augur Sad, or whatever we end up calling it. No, not uh, Augur Sad. <laughs> Augur. I, I was Augur. I didn't mean to suggest a name change. I'm sorry. <laughs> you could have a little frog as your logo and it could be Fogger. Fogger. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, we can cross. See if you can cross this page of metrics without getting hit by a car. <laughs> that would be exactly it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. That's patentable stuff right there, Matt. You should uh, <laughs> check your university's IP folks involved in this right now before. Yeah, just do it. it. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'll work with Matt. We'll we'll probably just org auger as it currently exists for the time being, and just we'll kind of work independently for a while. Okay and just kind of show you what we come up with and then we can kind of systematically make recommendations back into the main line. Yeah, I, I'd like to see if, if there are things that you're looking for. I'd like to see the interface work. Like if you've got data that wants to be displayed, I'd like to work on the integration point and just getting data from whatever format 
I think it's going to, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, I have some ideas on that. It's going to be really, um, so things like physiology and even getting it into, say, an SPDX format, if you want to display it in that way, there's some really, like, devil in the details stuff. And I think we'd, we'd really just start out with some pretty high-level high level descriptions. Um, it's things like the number of files that have declared licenses, the number of identified declared licenses. I mean, probably even just those two things right off the bat. So I think it'd just be kind of a textual display. Yeah. So yeah. and I'm just I'm just saying if he if he builds it using the framework we have, then adding visualization to it later is easy. Okay. And, and well, yeah, we definitely will. That will on the board. Okay. So when he's ready for to talk to us, we're keen to talk to him to make sure that rolls in right. Okay, because that'd be cool if you could take that and if we could get I'll kind of follow along with what Grimoire Lab is doing, but if you could take some of those tools that have some initial risk bootstrap stuff when you go to Japan. Yeah, I, I think that should be a goal um, yep. for the trip. Um, November, wait, October, it's still three months. We have three, almost three whole months, so mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's enough time to get in the work stream. Okay, cool. Right on. Uh, what else? What do other people have? Uh, the Augur repository moved over to the chaos organization finally. I slept uh, well that night. I yeah. was happy. <laughs> no, we were, you know, it was like every time we talk about doing it, we sit around and we go, okay, what are the things we're going to break when yeah. we do this? <clears throat> and we, we got it down to a point where we, the only thing we broke was Travis CI, and that was an easy thing to fix. So, you know, once our anxiety about what happens when you move an organization with a repo, was subsided. We, we're all. It's all there, and now we don't have to worry about it anymore. So GitHub knows what they're doing. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. <clears throat> but you get. I'm telling you, the warning messages you get when you set out to to start that process. You know, they make you think really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they warned me. They told me this could suck. They told me it might all vanish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's yeah, obviously obviously they protected against that pretty well. Uh, well, that's great. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, us too. Us too. It's much, it's much easier to have it in the chaos repository and that's talk good. about it that way. Where I see stuff breaking when they move organizations is in the documentation because suddenly the URLs and the paths and things don't work anymore. And we do have we do have some of that, um, but a lot of our documentation is now hosted in the app, so um, we've minimized much of that. But there's there's still some things that are, there's one page in particular I know is going to break the next time we restart our Docker containers. Um, but it's a page I don't think most people look at, so we're okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, good. Cool. I, I had something on my mind that I just wanted to kind of throw out there. So I was thinking, I was thinking today. Um, so we have the DNI work group is putting together um, you know, ways that other communities can generate the DNI reports, right? And I've told you I've, I'm just, I'm absolutely in love with that idea. And I think we should do the same thing for things like growth, maturity, and decline, how you could produce a, a report around growth, maturity, and decline, or how you could do something similar for value. Some reports might be bigger, some might be smaller, but it's the, the, the items that these, um, these work groups find to be important and kind of the methods behind which you would collect that data, which I, okay. So I've, I've been uh, totally, I just love the idea because I think it's something that's highly, highly tractable. Um, so then I was thinking too, is there a way as these move forward, which I think they are, um, is there a way for a community to run these reports across two years and see improvements? So what I mean by that is, for all of us that are in academe, right, we have all of these accreditation bodies. So we either have AACSB or we have ABET accreditation. And there are ways that you can understand your program. So perhaps understand a college. But one of the things that, that ABET does is they also provide a mechanism by not only which to re produce the reports, but which uh, ways that you can hold the reports against each other year after year to see areas of improvement for your own project. 
Because, I mean, we always have this problem, right, that there's no best. You know, it's hard, it's hard for this is that red, yellow, green kind of thing. It's hard for me to say what that best might be. Yeah, and there's people who want the best. I know. Uh, and um, so, yeah, go, I'm sorry. You're, I, I get, I, I'm following you. I won't derail. You no, go. yeah. So I just, maybe, maybe one of the things, again, just I'm thinking out loud, this is that weekly meeting, that maybe we should also think about ways by which you can run the report on a yearly basis or, you know, by yearly basis and be able to compare those results across time as a way to reflect on your own community. So you see improvement in DNI or you see improvement in, in value, downstream value, or you see improvement in, in on risk, whatever that might mean. So I think, I think the way to do that is improvement against some goal that you set. Mm -hmm. So not a, not improvement. I mean, you define what improvement is. I mean, that's how ABET is. You yeah, get to define anything that you want. Yeah, no, and I'm, I'm saying like right now, yeah. I mean, that is a good idea. Grimoire Lab doesn't let you define that, and neither does Augur. But those are features that any performance management system that's any good, in other words, no performance management system that exists today, should do, is you should be able to look at quantitative stuff against goals. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that. Um, I'm thinking about it from a tool perspective. Sure. So even right. if you even if you don't have goals, uh, comparing across. You stopped, Georg. Yeah. Georg might be relying on home Wi-Fi or. No, he's here. Yeah. Totally vanished. If it's me, if I have Wi-Fi problems, that's always when I'm on campus because my home connection is significantly better than my campus connection. <laughs> Sad. Because why wouldn't it be? <laughs> All right. While we're waiting for him to come back, um, yep. the next DNI meeting, I thought like Eric said it was tomorrow, but it's not tomorrow, right? It's no. the following week. Tomorrow right? is um, growth maturity and decline. Okay, perfect. Just checking. And, and Garrick, I will, I will help out with that tutorial. Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay, or you totally dropped off. Yeah, I noticed. I have <laughs> unstable Wi-Fi here. Um, what I was thinking out loud is that even without goals, comparing across time is something I think naturally will emerge. So once, this is my hypothesis, that once a community has a diversity and inclusion report, or it doesn't have to be confined to only DNI metrics, that same process should apply to all of our metrics. It's just, you need different ways of collecting the data. Mm -hmm. the, but the general process will be the same. And once you have a document outlining, okay, this is what we did, these are the results, then doing it again two years later shouldn't be that difficult. They might already have established a repository or some knowledge base for how they did it initially. And then including the previous results in the analysis. So one of the things that we have is um, reflection part, or that's something that I would strongly advocate for where the community looks at, okay, so this is what we see, this is what we saw, what we see, this is what it means. And to arrive at meaningful insights there, looking at the past, I think will naturally emerge. Mm -hmm. Now there's a second, component to that and that is can we collect these reports and aggregate them and provide comparison data and by doing that as a service the chaos project provides it produces a value because you can say i want to compare myself to similar projects and get those aggregated and because that is valuable to the projects, we will get the numbers to do that. So that's another component that I just know we have talked about in the past. So that actually brings up some of that. It, it, you're talking about like curating data? Yes. So, I mean, Sean, that's like OCDX work, right? Mm, yeah, big time. And <clears throat> basically the idea of as communities generate data sets in the form of these reports. How do we 
uh, effectively store them? I think um, that's a really great question. Like that's a use case that probably needs a short description and to be covered by the software that we're writing. You know, how do we, I mean, cause you can always, you know, in theory, you can always rerun the report because the data quote unquote is always there. But if you run a report off of something, it might be good to just create a separate copy of the data that generated that report. So if for example, somebody later goes in and fixes the GH torrent data that was broken and, and you get a different report in 2018 than you would have gotten in 2016 for 2016, but that, that doesn't happen, right? I mean, I think really it's that use case where something happens in the way that things get calculated, gathered, harvested, whatever, that the data for the period that you looked at earlier changes and, and you can't rely on knowing that it's gonna be the same. And I think anybody that's worked with this data probably keep stuff off to the side for that reason. So mm -hmm. I think if there's like, there's this notion of a regular report, like your TPS reports that somebody's gonna want and you wanna save, I don't think you just, I don't think you wanna save a PDF of the data. I think you wanna save either like an SPDX file with a sort of stated structure or just flat out JSON or CSV is. Whatever the format is, just the right, raw that, result numbers. You can do that in Augur on a, on, a, on a metric by metric basis, but we don't have a function that allows you to download all the metrics that were run on this page. <clears throat> and that might be a really good function is what I'm hearing. Well, that, I think it'll be a kind of a combination of a couple of things. One is the, there's the tools like Augur. Right. But then there's also, I think it's also being able to archive the reports, which may only be generated, you know, 25% by Augur. So, and, and if those reports are documents, like would we think, like I think about something I think of, is it, is it data or is it a document? Um, I was considering the use case of preserving data that was used yeah. to generate a report so that you could run comparisons using software. I think so, too. so that's one use case. But the second use case, it sounds like is <coughs> archiving these documents. Mm -hmm. the, the generated documents that you share with people. Um, I think I was uh, leaning towards the first. I which think, the data. I mean, from a document perspective, I might argue that most organizations and most people have a way they do that. Like, if, if you want to see my NSF reports for every grant I've ever had, I have them. You know, um, mm -hmm. but organizationally, I don't have a, I am the organization. I Yeah. But like there was places when I worked for corporations where we shared, we stored things for years. And when we're asked, what did it look like last year? We'd pull up that spreadsheet or that report. We wouldn't requery the database usually. Right. For exactly the reasons I described earlier, I think. Yep. I totally agree. Hmm. Georg, did you have something? I wanted to agree to the idea to store the data but also the reports, I think it would be helpful to keep those together. Yeah, and like from an ABET perspective, from an accreditation perspective, it's the data that gets compared across time, not necessarily right. reports. So just, I don't know, not to solve here, just something that's been on my mind a little bit. No, there's, um, there's a lot of ways that we could solve that. I would be interested to hear what people actually running these communities would want. Um, well, it, yeah, and I, it may be horse before the cart here. Like first we need to maybe. focus on generating the reports or providing the mechanisms by which those reports can be generated. So I don't mean to overstep anything. No, I, I don't think you're overstepping at all. I think once, if, once we get to this idea of here's a report that some group wants to keep, um, mm -hmm. the tech, it's just a question of making sure we have server resources that can, you know, like some kind of way that we've agreed to persist and store. Mm -hmm. um, I've used Amazon's Glacier for things that I don't need to access very often. It's very mm -hmm. it's basically a slow retrieval, limited throughput storage, but it's about tenth, a tenth the cost of what you pay for something like Dropbox or mm -hmm. other shared services. So it's slower, but you don't need this kind of thing to be fast. Um, and it might be something where because the cost is low and controllable, maybe we can get 
a group of companies to sponsor this kind of like long-term storage mm -hmm. as a separate as a separate enterprise and separate only in the sense that people if if we give them this long-term storage we want to also be able to give them some trust that it'll be there in mm -hmm. 10 years so if we work out some kind of a deal with amazon where they we can do that i think mm -hmm. everybody <clears throat> and it gives us a chance to do a lot of things and help help a lot of people that's cool okay those are ideas just spitballing oh i get it that's good um, all right yeah. and this, this is actually in the charter of chaos which is finding a standardized way to represent this data so and i think we're we're there i mean we're, we're getting there we're getting there now we're talking about the long-term preservation of those representations yeah and if we can get standardized ways of representing the data that would help yeah in yeah. that presentation so yeah absolutely so not to take us a feel when you say standardized ways of representing the data i always just think of like spdx some standard so it's um it's a the name value pairs essentially of the things okay. we're keeping track of yeah and the hierarchies that they may exist around right yeah <clears throat> i mean it's kind of like the json that you spit out but yeah. right now I'd, I'd contend that that's probably unstandardized it's just it's what you think is appropriate. Right. And I would, as, as long as the name value pairs are defined, mm -hmm. uh, then it doesn't matter if it's a JSON file or a CSV or. Oh, FCV exactly. Or like, like, um, or tag file. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, cool. <clears throat> uh, Anybody but to avoid the, the discussion from the SPDX group, maybe we want to decide on one format and not two. Um, yeah, but what they represent is very different. I don't mean to overthink this right now. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all about license, copyright, and files. Well, and there'll be lots of time to overthink it once we start making it. Or Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, well, all right, cool. Um, what else, folks? I was uh, stumbling over the growth machine decline work group moving to a branch on metrics. Right. So Ben had suggested that as an easier way to merge. And I went along with it. And I, after looking at what we were doing in the fork, the main, the main reason is that <laughs> There's two. One, it makes it a lot easier for us to update from what's happening in the metrics repository. That pull request to align is a little bit more straightforward. Two, we had done some things with the growth maturity and decline or like we deleted every other working group. So we were focused, but that meant that our pull requests were really convoluted. And so ever getting back to center was going to be a painful act of manually copying files. And we just as a group didn't want to work that way. And I think I think there was some discussion, we were somewhat ambivalent in our last call about whether ultimately it was a fork or a, or a branch, but Ben had made some arguments previously that a branch is much easier to work with and understand. And so that's what we went with. And I think if you think of it from the point of view of a new person coming onto the project, the that there's a relationship between the metrics repository and the work group dash GMD repository isn't immediately clear. Um, you know, there's no there's no natural place that's going to make them look there because they don't really know what that is, but they know what metrics is, and we talk about metrics as the main repository. <coughs> so I think. I mean, these are the these are the things that were discussed in the last meeting. And I think if Kevin hasn't already, he's sending out the notes from that meeting shortly. Um, and that was mm -hmm. one of the topics covered. We're meeting again tomorrow too. Yeah. So uh, was was it? Sorry, I, I just sucked a lot of air out of that call. Was there a question, or was I just banned? No, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's good to hear the the rationale. I, I heard it the pa in the passing, but. I wasn't quite sure what the main reason was. I know that the alignment was an issue. And while yes, the 
relationship to the metrics repository is less obvious in its own repository. Managing a branch and managing a fork um, with regards to upstream is the same. It doesn't matter where it's located. And I, by having it in a branch, I think you're losing visibility. You're losing the ability to add contributors to your own repository. You're losing your own space for issues and wikis and your own readme file. So you're hiding the work that you're doing behind metrics. And unless you leave an information sent trail and three clicks down, someone <clears throat> might not find it as easily. Yeah, I, and, I think I think those are valid points. Um, and so technically maintaining the upstream <coughs> compatibility, you'll have the same issues. I, yeah, I, I think, like I said, we were pretty, it was pretty much a toss up on our last call about whether to go with a fork or a branch. And it was the, and I agree upstream, it doesn't matter. I think it's the fact that we had gone so far afield from what was in metrics and we needed to do a massive realignment. You know, we chose, yeah. we chose to do it um, ultimately almost on a coin flip as a branch. Um, largely, I think Ben's recommendation, I don't remember what the details of it were, but in my own mind, it was this, I think it's easier to say that the metrics are working around the metrics and our working group is in the WGGMD branch because I, I have to point people to a repository anyway, and so it's no more effort to point them to a branch. Um, and they're much more likely to guess at something that is at least close, because we're, we're all pointing them to the metrics repository at one point or another. Yep. <laughs> so time so, will tell. Another um, observation might be that GitHub standard behavior for pull requests is to point it at the master branch. And so if you get contributions for uh, growth margin decline and it's pointed to the master branch, not your growth margin decline branch, I don't know if that's going to be an issue. It's just something yeah. that I see happening. I've, I mean, I've certainly had to play a little bit of GitHub, GitHub hockey to do pull requests and to not the master branch. Um, yeah. it's, it's not the easiest part of their tool the pull requests, if you're not going master to master off a straight up fork, even going off of a branch is a little tricky and you've got to make sure it's pointed in the right direction. And if you click the wrong thing, it'll take you up, up to the root directory of the fork, of the not fork, of what's been forked. So I agree, there's a, there's a lot of yeah. usability issues there. Anyway, and nothing is lost. You can easily take what's in the branch right now and make that the new head of the repository if you ever decide to do that, so. Georg, yeah, can you join the meeting tomorrow? I can join the meeting tomorrow, yeah. Because maybe so. a larger audience to have this discussion. Yeah, and I guess um, I'm not, I don't know why, but apparently I'm not getting the, I know I subscribed to the new chaos thing. But the what? Uh, I'm the, the new mailing list, um, I guess. Hey, yeah, so Jesus did respond that he wasn't sure the branch issue was decided. So um, nothing is undoable. Um, so that might be coming back up. I okay. didn't see that the, we'd sent the notes out already or the reply, which makes you wonder what's up with my mail. Um, Actually, so Don, you mentioned that Daniel had sent out an email to the chaos list. Um, no, to the... Oh. Sorry, to the group of us that was organizing okay. um, ChaosCon. Okay, okay. Because we didn't have a separate list, so last time we were using just a random distribution of organizers, and so he just emailed all of us personally. Sorry. Okay. So I might have I might have said it was to the list, but now that okay. I think about it, it was not. Okay, Sean, if you're having because we did have a weird kind of problem with the chaos list okay. a few days ago. We had an admin interface issue. All right, because I so, I haven't gotten any emails from the I'm looking here. It's I like just I forwarded it to you. Okay. So do I need to re-sign up for the list, or is there just... Uh, or I can check it out for you. I or, can. Or is there stuff I've lost? Is, I guess the only Have thing. you not been getting emails since ChaosCon? I've been getting some. Okay. Like I, 
There actually haven't been very many since Chaos okay. came. Uh, most of the messages I've been getting were coming from uh, the GitHub repos. Yeah, that's where I've been seeing a lot of my activity too. Yeah, I've been seeing There was a lot. discussion last week about the risk stuff. Yeah. There were like half a dozen emails about that, but I think that was kind of the last discussion on the main list. All right. Um, anybody else? Good. All right. Well, it's good to see everybody. These are nice talks. Um, Don, keep us posted as you Ooh. need a hand. I have one more, one oh, more okay, update Don. from the. Too late. I'm just kidding. You can you can do it. I'll shut up. No. <laughs> no, you just kidding. The the growth uh, the DNI work group um, has been thinking about moving back to a weekly schedule. Oh, because yeah. now that we have the foundation for what we want to do and the structure, we want to get moving faster on producing the resource pages and sync up more frequently. Okay. So I, I think we could argue the same thing should be could be true for growth, maturity, and decline. I just want to coordinate it <coughs> so we don't end up on the same day. So are you guys thinking of starting like uh, two weeks from today tomorrow? With well, that. we've only been talking about it. We haven't set any date yet. Okay. The first initial idea was that we just meet every week, but this would overlap with uh, GMD. We can move. So, I mean, I don't think there's any... You know, that that would be our solution. We can move Wednesdays as well. Aren't holy, Wednesdays aren't a holy day for growth, maturity, and decline work. We, we picked it just so that everybody could remember it's a Wednesday yeah. and there's a work meeting. So... Yeah, so you um, can just keep the GMD on Wednesday, so just move it up or back an hour. That's true, too. I'm sure I'm sure Jesus would appreciate starting at 10 instead of 11 our central time. Yeah, although he's a night owl. So. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'll, I'll ask him tomorrow. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd encourage any of those work groups to meet more regularly. Right on. <laughs> Want to move things forward? I Sounds good to me. No, and people, and my theory is people know a routine, so if it's always the same time, it's easier to remember. Yeah, I agree. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up on weekly meetings, but All right. it's more, more for the work groups. All right, everybody. All right. So before I say goodbye, anybody else have something? Right, uh, rudely cut anybody off? I'm wearing my Uno shirt today. I just want credit. I saw that. So we've got a lot of representation from Nebraska Omaha today. I'm, I'm, I'm branded. I'm branded so. I know you have a hat too somewhere. So uh, it's, it's an old school hat too. So <clears throat> yeah, it's um, right here. It's uh, it's the old logo. <laughs> the old logo, I guess. Yeah. Go would, Max. The uh, bald man has many hats. <laughs> here in my office at home. <clears throat> so, all, all right, till right. till next time, everybody. All right, see y'all. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.